Welcome to Good Mythical More. We're gonna continue our spirit of cornhole by scorning some scenarios that are easier to make positive. So it's kind of like the opposite of, we're still good, it's we're still bad. <laughs> but first, let's play Ready, Pet, Go. We try to name the pet that you show us a picture of using the hashtag GMM Ready, Pet, Go. This submission is from Blucif, Blucif. Blucifer. Well, this is a, this cat has its own Shrine. Portrait. Um, I mean, you know, I got portraits of my dogs in my in my creative house office. Those, those are some, like, bold, healthy-looking whiskers. Yeah, they are. They kind of undersold know? them in the portrait. Yeah. Thurston. Ooh, that's good. You like Thurston. that? You Thurston. Thurston. You know that, He's very um, regal. Whiskers evolved to be the width of a healthy cat's body so that it can know if its body can fit through things. So if your cat is overweight, it's that's a problem because the whiskers don't grow proportionate to uh, and it's over it's it's overweightness. Oh. I learned that last night. I was watching some Netflix show about cats. I thought you were gonna say I was watching. I was watching Sokka try to go into a hole and realizing that it's like, it's like it inside fit. the mind of cats. And um, they did have this one part where. They kept making the hole smaller and smaller and to see if the cat could go through it. Also talked about how the collar bones in a cat are not anchored to more bone, but that they're just like floating. They, they float more. In like cartilage or something. In, in, the, in the muscles, so like. That's why they can just like jump totally, off buildings and go totally through. Totally dislocated. How, well, that's why they can go through like a, a four it's inch It's like a hole. jellyfish, it's a jelly cat. Yeah, I, it, I mean it really made me appreciate my cat um, it, honestly, it kind of makes me fear them even more. And did you know that they have um, whiskers? Of course, there's some on the eyebrows too, but there's some on the back of the paw. Like behind the paw, they have the same whiskers, you know? For what? To see if uh, they can stick their hand in something? It's for parallel parking. Ah, uh, got it, that's it. Um, scrumptious. Crow. 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 That's how, I mean, you got those crow-like eyes? No. <laughs> It's okay. black. It's okay. a black cat. All right. Okay. Got it. Crow. Crow. Hey, send us your pets. Hashtag GMM Ready Pet Go. <clears throat> we will incorrectly name them. Okay. I'm going to give you absolutely positive, shining things. And then you're going to tell me the downside. Debbie, we thing. want to Debbie down it. Stevie. Stevie Downer. Um, Stevie yes. Down. A double rainbow on a warm summer day. The, the worst part about a double rainbow on a warm sunny day is all the idiots that will be next to you with their cameras out trying to recreate a viral moment because of what happened about 10 years ago. May he rest in peace. And you know, he died. The yeah. double rainbow guy is dead. Yeah, 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 he is. Poor guy. Think about that for a few moments. As happy as he was, look at him now. And totally it, dead. In spite of his death, and in spite of the fact that he can no longer sing that song, uh, there are many people out there trying to fill his shoes, but his shoes will never be filled. And you know what, every time you try to do it, every time you get super excited about a double rainbow, you annoy the person next to you who's just trying to enjoy a moment in nature and not think about how it translates to Instagram. Not to mention, Every time you see a double rainbow, that's one normal rainbow you won't see because there's only a set number of rainbows. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. You watched a rainbow documentary on Netflix last night. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a there's a predetermined number of rainbows and in also, all of history, when, past, present, future. When God runs out of rainbows, the world ends. <laughs> right. Because you know the rainbow. So it's um, one step closer to the total annihilation of all life as you know it. Yeah. It not only means gay pride, it also means that God is not going to flood the earth. That's true, right. Yeah. Okay, you're pretty good at this. <laughs> I, I like that, Rhett, I like you stated the, um, you know, kind of the question in your answer back to me at the top, and I appreciate it. Well, I'm, me I'm media trained. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks that you're edited out. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm media trained. Uh, Old Debbie's out. We, we, do you remember that? We actually did. Media trained. We got media trained <laughs> by the ad agency for Alka-Seltzer back in 2008 when they were gonna send us out on the road 
and they were like, you gotta make all these videos, but also we're gonna try to get you on TV, radio, talking about what you're doing. Get interviewed. And that was one of the, maybe the only thing that I remember from that media training is that finding a way to restate the question and your answer is a compelling way to speak because then you will be, the the uh, sound bite will make sense. The thing that I remember is kind of the opposite. It's no matter what they ask you, answer whatever it is you wanna talk about. That's also correct. Right, which is of course, a, you know. Like a political strategy. Yeah, I, I don't watch people be interviewed unless it's a, a long form podcast. I, I just don't, I, I, that's not in my life anymore. But every time. Especially you, that, that's, that stuff where it's like, no one's answering the question they're asked, uh-uh. Well, so, that, and that's the kind of the wonderful so thing about podcasts, right? Because because people do answer because, the questions. Because, because, because. But the thing is, is that anytime you watch a politician on a news show, you see the media training at play. They're like, I have four things that I'm going to say. If you've been media trained. And that's it, oh, yeah. and that's it. To most people, I think they're like, oh, they're just dodging the question. Which is exactly what they're doing. Ugh. Sad, it's a sad, that's sad. It's yeah. a sad, yeah. Your dog suddenly waking up with the power to speak perfect English. Yeah, but all she's saying is stop farting under the bed sheets because hey. that's where I am. Uh. Like, I, you know, I feel bad. You know, it's like, should I? You know, I'm kind of afraid of what she would say. She seems much more opinionated these days. Why are you singling out just Jade? Oh, Jasper wouldn't say anything negative. <laughs> He's a bundle of positivity. But Jade is like, uh, if she's in a spot and you want to move her, it's like, gah, gah, gah. it's like. This is why. You, gah, 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 gah. This is why you don't. Gah, 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 gah. You don't want your dog speaking English to you, and that is because a lot of the things that are happening with your dog on a daily basis that you interpret as love, like them licking you or them licking your hand or them coming up and touching you, if that was translated into English, like it is on that TikTok channel with that big dog that hits the things and apparently is having some sort of tr bunny. crisis. Bunny's having a crisis. I. What? It, it, she's not having a crisis. It's it, she thinks people she's a are human. putting together this like yeah conspiracy theory esque thing that she is, thinks she's a human stuck in a dog's body and she's that yeah, that's where all of her answers come from and she's like yeah it's this whole it's a thing that's horrible. There's nothing if it ain't broke, don't make them talk. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is the fact that if you could actually hear what your dogs were saying, it would be much less. Uh, loving than you think it is, and you would learn that you are probably going to be I don't eaten so. by the dog if you die. In fact, I don't think I so. was listening to that podcast, A Short History, and it was a short history of the Irish potato famine. And one of the interesting things that happened to the dog population during the Irish potato famine is that while all the people were starving over the point of about seven years, all the dogs got incredibly fat because they were eating all the dead bodies. So you think your dogs are just. The reason, you see those yeah, those but. Instagram posts where the dogs go and hang out next to the grave of an owner, it's because they want to eat the body, okay? That's no. that's what they're thinking, guys. Get your head out of the double rainbow. Hi guys, I, I, I'm having a mic issue, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can, I don't, know if, I don't know if the folks at home can. Oh, God! You trying to make your way up here? You're trying to throw your voice? <laughs> what on earth? Did you press your button too hard, Stevie? What happened? Wait, you can't hear me now either, can you? No. No. Can you hear me? Stevie, no. 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 What about me? <laughs> <laughs> just, just give me a moment. Just, just yell at us. Stevie has this yelling voice. It's not oh. actually yelling. Oh. It's just a oh. different character. Guys, I almost... There, okay, I I, it's my yelling voice. Injury. A major injury just happened. Tell us what happened. Um, well, basically, it's gonna be really entertaining. Uh, yeah. Sometimes the mic gets stuck and it'll remain on even if I'm not pushing the button. Oh and so that just happened. So, well, I'll say someone came to help me. <laughs> 
fix it. And then the mic just launched itself at my, uh, feels like my collarbone. Towards my face, I backed up and it just went into my collarbone area. But my well, collarbone be is not connected to my shoulders so that I can fit through small holes. Exactly. So, you're so fine. I'm okay. Okay. Um, well, thank I'm, I'm glad. Thank but, you. Thank, thank you. Cats can jump up to six times their height. That would be like a human jumping over a giraffe. Wow, I gotta watch this show. Glad you're okay, Stevie. Thank you. Um, let's promote Last Meals. Great. Um, over on the Mythical Kitchen, they got a series, if you don't know about it, Last Meals is it's what it's called. Wonderful. It's when they bring in a guest. Tom Hanks was on a show last month. Um, next month, you can see yours truly. You said it's when they bring in a guest, and then you didn't say, and then what? Next month, you can see me. And what we do is uh, we talk about what we what we would love to be our last meal, and then, and then they questions freaking about make death. it. Then they answer. Uh, you, then you answer questions about death, and life, and you know the abyss. It's, it's I love it. It's a great thing. Mythical Kitchen is doing a lot of great stuff. It's one of the best things. Go watch it and comment what guests you want Josh to interview. That's next. right. Stand up comedian Margaret Cho is going to be on there soon as well. Hmm. Wow, Tom Hanks, Margaret Cho, Link Neal. Charles Lincoln Neal the third. A VR simulation of your greatest fantasy. Okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. Let me find what's mm -hmm. wrong with Nish. <laughs> Everybody's on board. Um so no no negative there. Mm -hmm. I think it's just gonna come down to stamina. You know, it's like, if you wanna make it to the peak, you gotta put in the work. And, um, you know, of course I'm talking about um, my, my communal journey with all of my closest friends to the top of uh, Mount Mitchell. Mount Mitchell, that's right. There's no sex involved here. All of your Instagram ads are all about Mount Mitchell. Yeah, you Fan. recovering slut. <laughs> you recovering slut. I know why, I remember now oh. that happening. Tell us. And I know why that, it's just, there was some, there's a hat company <laughs> that just, they put all these dumb things on hats and they had a, they had a mellow yellow hat. Ooh, I've, I've been wanting a mellow yellow hat, but I can't get one that's tall enough. Yeah, you've been and, looking for a mellow yellow hat. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, you've been I've been searching mellow yellow. And they hat. make the hat. It's like called old school hats or something. But they make a lot of snarky. They make those hats. Oh crap! Um, We're both on the hunt for a mellow yellow hat. So and so it started advertising those overly sexualized, potentially. I don't know. But here's they didn't cool, reflect positive on me. But here's apparently. the cool thing about this company is 10% of all the proceeds go to help recovering sluts. So, so you can feel good That's about- That's where it came from. You can feel good about your purchase. That's where it came from. So uh, yeah, I, I think I might break an ankle. I'm going In back your to, Mount Mitchell my, VR. You know, yeah, yeah, might yeah, break yeah. an ankle. Okay. Might, might suffer a spinal injury. Uh, you know what, guys? The bottom line is, as great as you think that might be, the resolution is just not there yet. <laughs> Waking up to the smell of bacon and getting surprised with breakfast in bed. But you woke me up. <laughs> like, I was gonna sleep another hour. Well, and actually the bacon wasn't for you, <laughs> is the worst part. The bacon was a gift that was being prepared for someone else, and you got turkey bacon. <laughs> because the person who made you breakfast in bed is worried about your cholesterol. No fun. That, that, you might as well I don't think might as well eat VR bacon. Yeah, you gotta go yeah, you gotta you gotta get the bacon and still find a way to be negative about it, man. Okay. You're on the verge of a catastrophic cardiovascular event. There and you all, go. And all it's gonna take is one piece of bacon. 
Right. And you had two, my friend. <laughs> it's wild to think. Good that, luck. It, that it that yeah, like a heart attack could come down to one piece of bacon. I don't know how it works, but I, I guess think that's it's how true. it works. Yeah, man. It's like I don't you're want to teetering think about on the that. edge. I don't want to think about that. Thanks for the breakfast in bed. That's what's killed me. Yep. Your prized cow, Matilda, winning best in show at the state fair. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Matilda didn't want to win. Because Matilda, uh, tying into a previous one of these, has the ability to speak English and let you know, listen, you've been taking me to this state fair every single year, and you know how I don't like to be the center of attention. <laughs> so the last thing that Matilda... Matilda's embarrassed. <laughs> Matilda is dealing with deep shame. Because what makes a cow win best in show is not anything that Matilda's proud of about herself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so now you've got to deal with a depressed cow that was a happy cow up until the point that she won this award for heftiest heifer. Well, uh, I mean, you know what she gets for winning. Eating. Oh, that's even worse. That's even worse. I'm pretty good at this. Taking a warm bubble bath after a long day of hard physical labor. Oh. But your sweaty, hairy uh, uncle <laughs> uh, just got out of that bath. You know? Those aren't. Share, share the bath. Those aren't the kind of bubbles that you think they are. <laughs> those are uncle bubbles. Uncle bubbles. <laughs> And, Uncle Bubbles, that's and, what we started calling Uncle him. Bubbles. And to make matters worse, uh, <laughs> something that you don't know is that within every single bubble, there is a little bubble boy. Uh, just like in that episode of Seinfeld. Yeah, and uh, he's it, in an iron lung. Every time you pop one of those, it's over for another bubble boy. So enjoy your bath. I took a bubble bath uh, a few days ago and let me tell you, before I did, I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take this tray out from the kitchen count cabinet, and I'm gonna I'm gonna assemble. I, I had some pecans for my aunt. I had a little bit of uh, carrots, julienne sliced, with a couple of dollops of hummus. You put this in the bath? I put this on a plate, and then I had. Um, um, a big scoop of cookie dough, and a, a bottle of Topo Chico. I put it all on the tray, I took it upstairs, and, I, I, I have a, and I've got one of those, well Christy has one of these planks that goes across our bathtub, I don't know, so she can put stuff on it. Like o cookie dough. Oils, salts, rubs, clear all that stuff off, put my, put my tray down, sit down in the bathtub, and I, I sat there and had me a nice little nice little meal. Like I was on vacation, in my own tub. I, I don't believe in creating that decade of an experience for yourself at your own home. There was music playing. Because then you have nothing to look forward to when my you go dog. on vacation. <laughs> this totally sounds like something Link would do, he's such a dork. I know, oh my God. I can't believe he's telling this story. Your I'm mic, your buttons are on. Oh, loser. Yeah, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the kind of stuff Sorry. they usually Treat say. yourself. Hey, if you haven't taken a bubble bath lately, do it. If you haven't taken a bubble bath and enjoyed julienne cut carrots. <laughs> do it. You don't know what you're missing. Do it, whatever floats your boat. Last Meals is Mythical Kitchen series all about life, death, and food. They had Tom Hanks. They're about to have me and Margaret Cho on the show. So head over to the Mythical Kitchen channel.